this is uh, super exciting for me. And um, I think the more you hear my story, um, you'll realize that this is, um, you know, a, a dynamic moment in my journey. Um, so like Nicole just mentioned, um, if you can log in to mentee.com and use the code 8444570, um, there's only two activities that I want you to do. So if, and again, if you do not have uh, your phone or the capacity to log in, don't worry. It's not that big of a deal. It was just an opportunity. I am uh, an educator. So this was that, that uh, it's a tool to kind of just open up the room and, and keep us um, a little bit engaged. Uh, so if, um, actually, before we kind of start some activities, my name is Dr. Kyra Alvarado. Um, I am a teacher, a seasoned teacher, um, and uh, an alumni of University of Maryland. Did a lot of time at University of Maryland, uh, bachelor's in Spanish language, uh, master's in education, and then I went back for my PhD in education. And so um, you will hear a little bit in the future uh, throughout this presentation, it's just like what I learned and what I was able to build uh, when I dove into the digital space. But um, with many of you who have decided to join today's presentation, I'm gonna make the strong assumption that, hey, you would like to see uh, and learn like what is it that she has to give or to offer or to teach about digital branding. So I wanna start with this question and thank you for those who have already uh, submitted some words. What do you believe a strong digital brand offers, right? Like, and, and whatever words um, come to mind, it's okay, right? We are just, I'm trying to exploratory, I'm trying to feel out the room. Um, and so offers can be, um, from the perspective of from the brand, like what are they offering or even what does it uh, provide, right? Uh, the person or the, the entity who has created the brand, like what is it that um, you will be able to produce or receive? All of those words um, will be perfect. So I'll give about 30, 45 seconds for you to type in uh, whatever words you feel come to mind. What does it offer? What, what does it uh, bring? What does it, um, what does it allow um, a brand uh, do, achieve, uh, if you have a strong, uh, successful digital brand? There's some other comments in the in the chat. Image, connection, credibility, engagement, nice. vision. Nice. I love it. So we are seeing, ooh, awesome. Narrative, engagement, consistency, connection, understanding, uh, educational content, story, credibility, all of it, uniqueness. And I agree, all of these um, words um, are associated with a strong digital brand. So I'm going to move on. Okay. What do you believe is the most important aspect in building a digital brand? So A or option one, a digital marketing knowledge base. Uh, option two, time needed to learn and execute. Option three, mindset or option for money needed to invest. So I'm curious to see what does the room feel that is the most important aspect in building this digital brand? All right, so we right now we have three voting for time and two voting for mindset, right? And, um, you know, I, I do agree with uh, many of you who are saying time. Time is uh, of essence, but I, I would actually lean in on mindset is one of the, the biggest things that, um, that's required and building this uh, digital brand, right? Uh, and I'll, I'll be able to kind of expand on that a little bit more. 
but let's start with um, a little bit about my brand story and where I was and, and how I navigated the digital space. So as I shared earlier, I had um, a PhD in education. Um, I have taught every grade level. So I have taught Spanish uh, at the elementary school level, at the middle school level, at the high school level. I even went, when I was at University of Maryland, um, I served as like a teaching assistant and prepare teachers. But um, after working so much in the industry, uh, in, in education, I really felt boxed in. Like I, I wanted to kind of, um, one, even just, I was trying to get an opportunity as an assistant professor. And there are so many issues in higher education. I just could not get that door open. Um, but after a lot of applications, I, um, I, I finally started to get some doors opening where I would probably, uh, I was trying to get roles like in a um, central office for a school district. Some different roles within education were opening up for me. What, what happened was that uh, my ex-husband at the time, um, he received the job promotion um, to the middle of the country. And right at that moment where all this work I had been doing to really showcase that I could do more than teaching, I had done research, I had uh, held leadership roles, and now these new opportunities were opening up. I had to kind of send them the email and say, I can't accept this role. I'm moving to, to St. Louis. So it was devastating, right? It's like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I've been working for this exit, this new world, this new opportunity, and I have to say no. And so then I um, moved to the middle of the country and um, I have to work, right? I didn't want to stay at home. I'm in this new town. And the only thing that I could quickly pull off was to go back into the classroom as a Spanish teacher. And so this is literally me um, in this Spanish classroom. Probably my vibe was exactly how you see in this picture where I'm like, oh my gosh, like I have been working to get out and I can't, right? Um, but I actually landed pretty well. I was in one of the top high schools in the country and they really treated their teachers like mini professors. And so they were like, we do not control your curriculum you know, there's obviously guideposts, but we trust you. You are a professional. We want you to lead your curriculum as you see fit. So they were, they had this very empowering lens. And so um, my PhD was empowering because I learned that I was able to be a thinker and to add uh, to knowledge base and education. And then here I was working in a space that was saying, hey, you have it, we trust you, right? And so, at that moment, I was like, I'm not where I wanna be, but you know what? I am just going to submit to being this amazing teacher, right? And, um, and, and I decided to do all the things that would get me excited. So I invested in a whole new wardrobe and, um, and then I just started crafting these dynamic lessons for students that were engaging and fun. And, um, you know, I, I kind of stood out because it was a predominantly white faculty and here is this, you know, Afro Latina walking through the hallways in these like cute outfits, and and the kid, the kids just ate it all up. They loved it. Um, and very soon after, um, I was promoted as the curriculum world language curriculum director. And so I'm doing really well in um, in in this school, in this district, professionally. Uh, that finally, there was a moment where um, I had a student who was. Uh, constantly in his phone. And I'm like, you know, what are you doing? He's like, I'm, I'm on Instagram. And at the time I had, I was on Instagram, but I didn't really use it. So I'm just like, why are you always on Instagram? Well, I started looking at uh, Instagram and I started seeing these bloggers um, who were sharing and showcasing their, their fashion, their passions for lifestyle. And I'm like, hmm. I could do that. And um, I had always, um, I, I had these former goals to model. Um, and when I was at University of Maryland, I was a part of like a fashion show group. Um, and we used to put productions and, um, and so I loved fashion. I loved it all, but I had 
I had absolutely disregarded those goals, those dreams, because I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm an adult now, like I'm focusing on my, my career. But I, when I saw that space, I was like, wait, maybe there's, this is an opportunity for me to start uh, delving into some of my closeted dreams. Um, I also had, since I was 20 years old, I had this dream of becoming a speaker, particularly a motivational speaker. But I didn't even know how to get there. I said, oh, I'm gonna get my PhD and maybe that'll help me. But, you know, especially with, with being a speaker, there's no clear route. You know, people become um, authorities of a particular subject and, and, you know, but I didn't know how to get there. So that was another one of those things where it's like, ah, I want that, but I don't know how to, how to get there. So here I am and I finally say, you know what? I am going to, um, I'm gonna start with a vision, right? And so that's my first principle. It's like, I had to kind of sit down and say, where am I trying to go? And I, I decided to create a vision board um, and I started to just add pictures as we all typically do with vision boards, pictures and language that resonated with me. And I didn't judge myself as I was adding the pieces that connected with me. I literally just bought like 10 different magazines off of, um, out, out of the store and cut whatever pictures, whatever words were like, were attractive to me. Well, after looking at, um, at this vision board, I was like, huh, this, you know, I, I keep seeing this woman who's stylish. I keep seeing, um these motivational words uh and you know and then i also kept seeing like words that resonated with entrepreneur entrepreneurship and um you know health and so long story short i kind of started to figure out what were the themes that i was attached to and connected to from that vision board it really helped me to, to kind of define hey this is who I want to become. And so with any brand, you really have to start from some, a space of where am I trying to get to, right? And so for me, let's say if, if I was going to be really, really honest, I said, I said, I would like to be a stylish, educational uh, educator, motivational speaker, um, and, and I want to chart that journey. So I saw it. I saw the vision, but then it was like, okay, how do I get there, right? And I and I felt like I already had a lot of good, right? I I had done the work within education, so I knew uh, some core principles on how to teach and how to serve others. Um, and then I also knew what it looked like, right? In my head, I kind of was like, I know what this woman that I want to become looks like, and then. I also recognized that for this to work, I had to submit to what I loved, right? There's nothing more difficult than building something that you don't like. And so with any brand, whatever you are passionate about, it comes out naturally. So I came up with my, my, my vision. I came with a mission statement to empower women to rise in style and career and business. So that was my my big goal, my mission statement, and I had the vision. Principle number two. Now, you may have the vision, you may have the, the, the mission statement, but a lot of business owners or even, you know, people who are trying to build a brand online don't get out the gate, right? And so the, that first thing you need to do is just start. And so I was I hadn't, I, it took me a while to start. There was a lot of fear playing out and um, I needed something to kind of just kick off my, my, my first step. And so um, what I did, and I needed this, not everybody needs this big start, but there was a friend who said, let's go to Paris. Um, and I was like, you know, yes, that is going to be the thing that allows me to kind of you know, start my blog and kind of tell everybody because I had a lot of fear about 
judgment or, you know, what, what are people, do people really want to hear about my interests? Like, who am I? Right. But I thought that Paris was fabulous enough that people would be interested. And I had, I would have the confidence, right? Because it goes back to confidence. I would have the con the confidence to release this content. So I started, I wrote my first blog post about my trip to uh, Paris. This is about in 2017. And quickly I realized like, wait, I am not, you know, going uh, to fabulous trips all the time. And so I recognized that I had to start exploring, right? Because I have my vision, I have my mission statement, but I still don't know what's my what's my rhythm right like and so I started exploring um from my vision board the things that I liked and um I wrote about my family I wrote about our dog at the time um but then I wrote a blog post about trends in in fashion and, and in style and the prep that it required to to do that blog post I got excited. So the excitement is something that you should be looking for. Um, and so I was, you know, I started to curate my outfits and started to, um, I contacted my, my family photographer and I was like, you know, I'd like to take pictures of my outfits and da -da. And all that to say, I realized that there was something there. I was like, I really enjoy this. Like, I can't wait to post this. And so that is insight into when we're building something, if we get excited and you can't wait, typically other people are gonna get excited about what you have to offer. So like I said, do what you enjoy and get excited. So I quickly found out, hey, style and fashion is where I wanna be. Um, another one in, in principle number two is, um, I was, like I said, I had a lot of fear. I was really insecure about uh, releasing content and writing. And, and I had this, like, I was scared. And I thought that, that people were going to chop away at my blog posts and say, oh, you missed the semicolon, you missed the comma. I was ridiculous. Like nobody is looking for that, right? And um, maybe other people in the room can relate to, we create these scenarios about what's gonna happen. This big scary monster is going to come and um, do whatever when you release content. You know, it's not real. It doesn't happen. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure other people have run into certain situations, but genuinely not once has anybody said, well, Kyra, you know, you, you forgot something or whatever. If anything, it's been very, very positive. And, and you know, at this point, you're just practicing, you're learning, and you're really just trying to understand what's out there. I mean, I I purchased numerous uh, digital marketing books, and I started to consume every um, article about um, digital marketing and, and building a digital brand. And I was just a sponge. Like I was like, you know, learning, learning, learning. All right. So you've started and um, you now have your mission statement. You know where you're trying to go. What's key about your brand online is that you want to figure out what are the core values that you want to be associated with and that um, you want to teach. So what do I mean by teach? Like, let's say, so for me, um, you know, my core values are uh, in relation to, you know, a woman should be empowered to, um, to you know, to, to pursue her career, uh, to also, um, you know, have a family, to, to be able to, you know, pursue her dreams. Um, and so, so those are things that I need to make sure that when people uh, look at my brand, look at my content, they can quickly associate that that's what I'm about, about empowering myself and empowering other women. And so every brand, I think that when you are trying to transfer, when you are trying to communicate what it is that your brand is about, you want to lean in on like three 
very clear values, three concepts, because what that allows you to do is to find numerous modes of content, but under those buckets, under those themes, because what this process is, is about teaching others what your brand is about, right? And sometimes we can easily get pulled into so many different directions. Like quickly, a lot of people right now in the digital space are like, oh, you know, I need to post, you know, three times a day, or I need to post, um, I need to, you know, jump on the, the this uh, competition. Um, what is a challenge, not competition, but a challenge, right? And TikTok, this, all that is great, but really, if you want to be effective, if you want to make sure that your message is connecting with an audience that is looking for you, you want to lean into those values. So you're going to choose them. Um, and then you're going to curate that brand with visuals and language that are in alignment. So I've shared with you about, you know, how I value, you know, being uh, or empowering women to be, you know, all the things essentially, that you can be stylish, that you can be a professional career woman, that you can run a business. So those are my core values, right? And I wanna, I wanna project that um, image and that language. So I'm, you know, obviously I have visuals of me dressed in suits. I have visuals of me dressed going on a date because I wanna make sure that it's, that I'm multi, you know, I'm, I'm hitting those multi-value points, right? And so when people see me, it's like, oh, I see her as an entrepreneur. Oh, but then I also see her as a stylish woman. Oh, but I also see her uh, as an educator. And that's intentional. And so I go, I commit to having a rhythm. If I've shared content about family, you know, today, then the next post is going to be one of my other values because I'm consistently shifting um, from those three to four values, but that keeps my audience continuously understanding and evolving with me about, oh, this is what her brand is about. Um, so I'm curating and, and picking colors. I'm writing about my story that again is in relation to these values. Sorry. And then, um, like I said, that's all, all of that is, is the strategy that you're trying to establish, right? Establishing experiences that are in alignment with your core values, and then also partnerships. And so partnerships are um, those, potent, like if you are a personal brand, then you are decisively choosing partnerships uh, with brands that allow you to, you know, further promote those values, right? And so, perfect example, um, not too long ago, a, um, it was like, it's a community of women that uh, are promoting, you know, digital entrepreneurship, and uh, they had a conference. And so they asked me, you know, Kyra, we'd like to partner with you, and we'd like for you to review, um, you know, our conference. And so at the beginning, I was like, ooh, I have, um, I'm kind of trying to do my own digital branding expertise. But I was like, wait, wait, wait. I am going to lean in because this is a value of mine. And I absolutely, you know, promoted their conference, attended their conference. And, and what it did was it further um, allows my, my audience to know that's, a, that's something that's important to Kyra, making sure that women understand and learn what it takes um, to establish a strong, <clears throat> excuse me, digital brand. All right, principle number four is all about creating high quality content. So every piece of content that a brand offers has like a metric that goes from zero to 10, I'm just saying, zero to 10 in reference to value. And when we want to try to provide high quality content, we want to try to release content that has numerous, as many points of value that you can. And so this little image that you see on the left is, you know, it's not perfect, but I do think it gives an idea of, okay, in, in this piece of content, it could offer, 
you know, information uh, or expertise. Uh, it can allow for people to feel engaged. It can be fun. It can, you know, allow, you know, it can be entertaining. Um, it, if you're sharing your story, that's like one, you know, a point. Uh, if it motivates or inspires someone else, that's a point. If you're giving away stuff, right? People get excited about that. That's a point. And so the more that we can consolidate or add these, all of these different things in one post, that is what um, I would consider and would contribute to releasing high quality content. And so again, make it as valuable as you can. I always, you know, I see unfortunately a lot in the digital space, people posting just to post, right? I, I am anti that philosophy. Do not post just to post. You want to make sure that, you know, when you post, Again, people are associating it with your mission, associating it with your brand values. And also you want people to say, wow, every time that brand releases something, it's good, right? And so that is more important than just, you know, fulfilling some kind of schedule or, or feeling like you need to just be present. You always want to be selective. Uh, so be selective about these partnerships, once you start growing and you are releasing high quality content, people are going to want to work with you, right? But you can't just, um, you should not just accept anybody who wants to work with you, right? Again, be selective, choose partnerships that support your mission, even if it offers like a certain amount of money or uh, offers even more visibility, you got to think, hmm, what is, where am I trying to go? And is this really going to get me there? Because sometimes partnerships can completely, it can take you off the rails. It can lose, you can lose uh, authenticity and connection with your followers and your community. Because it's like, wait, that's not what you said you were about or what you've been teaching us about who you are about. And um, so, yeah, so be selective. And then my third biggest one is you want to leave with gratitude. When um, in one of the things that I feel like it has served me is that every time I have a partnership, I'm so grateful genuinely. And then I, I really try to go above and beyond and do my best, right? And so what that does is, you know, your partner is happy and then that contributes to even more opportunities in the future, right? And you can sleep well at night. You're like, you know what? I gave it everything that I had. Um, so, so let's move forward. Oh, and, and one more actually, before we move to principle number five, you want to invest in the conditions that will allow you to deliver the highest quality content. So if that means you need to plan, if that means that you need to um, invest in resources or people to support you. Perfect example, early on, as I shared, I was the curriculum director. I had a family or have a family, but you know, I was married at the time. I um, had a young child and it's like, oh my gosh, here I'm adding this whole new, new venture how am I going to execute, right? How am I going to write all of these uh, blog posts? How am I going to, um, you know, be on Instagram all the time and posting content? Well, I had to be, I had to invest. And one of the ways that I invested was, uh, remember I shared about the family photographer. So I got into a schedule with her that every two weeks I would do uh, bulk content. So I would, you know, uh, prepare all of my outfits and uh, we would go out to a site and I would take a lot of pictures, right? Now, what that did, that only kind of took care of maybe 30% of the work because at least now I have my images, but then I could then use uh, my other time to write um, you know, to post those on Instagram and to, you know, to network and do all of the things. So you, that was an investment. A lot of, sometimes people are like, oh, I can just use it with my phone or I can just, um, do it on the whim. Genuinely, you know, uh, success is really, uh, you know, built off of preparedness. And because I was prepared, because I had my content, I was able to move, uh, with more ease. 
All right, so principle number five. With a digital brand, you honestly have to earn the respect in the digital world through consistency and community. So um, a lot of people think like, oh, you know, I, I built this thing and, you know, I'm here. I, I, I'm pretty in this or I got a great product. You know, why, why don't I have sales or why aren't people all over my website? Well, one of the key things is about really respecting other brands and other digital people. And that's by showing up for others. So we want people to comment on our page. We want people to purchase our products or, you know, be invested in what we're doing. Then you need to be invested in what other people are doing. And so I quickly learned that being excited about other people's journeys um, and really supporting and learning, that is what, that was, you know, one of the, the big aspects in my growth, in my, uh, and me building my own community. Because people could see that I was really invested in their, their brands, that they were also then invested in mine. You want to establish a rhythm. So, um, Again, it's not one post, it's not two posts, it's not three, or it, it's not one block. You know what I mean? It is really committing to a journey. I know that uh, when I started this digital journey, I said, hey, it took me, you know, for at least you know, let's include my bachelor's and my master's. It took about what, five, six years before I was a paid teacher, right? I had my undergraduate degree, I had my master's. And, and then even when I stepped into a classroom my first year, I was one of the, um, what is it, uh, blessed to kind of get paid during my teaching assistant, the teaching years where you get your, your hours. But most teachers that first year, they do not get paid, right? And so I recognize that in career, we are willing to submit to the learning for a long period of time, and we are willing to, to work without pay, right? And so I said, this can't be any different. If I wanna show up and become an influencer, if I wanna show up and become the speaker, I have to be willing to do put in the work and recognize that at the beginning, I am in training. I am um, getting my stripes, right? And so I got into a rhythm and, and submitted to the process. Um, early on, I was putting in a lot of hours and I was probably showing up on Instagram with looks and content probably every other day. Um, I have slowed down a bit because I, um, for different reasons, but I've kind of, you know, I'm in a new rhythm, if you could call it. But what allowed me to kind of establish myself was, you know, definitely showing up for others, establishing my consistent rhythm, and really uh, creating and building these relationships online. So, you know, again, you know, following other women that were in similar journey in my similar space, um, and really being excited and developing and nurturing those relationships. Um, is, is critical. All right, um, the sixth principle is about creating your digital hurricane, right? And you might be like, okay, what is that? This is the point where you've built the relationships, you have been doing a lot of partnerships, and now your brand is kind of taking off, right? And so this happens because you've been serving so much. You've been serving uh, individuals. You may, you've been partnering. You've been going to possibly conferences. You've been networking. People see that you are moving, that you're active. And so um, to create this, uh, I guess, this high level of activity in the digital space, like people are talking about you, people are sharing your content, uh, people are resharing your blog posts and, and your, your pictures, they like you, right? Um, it's key to participate in multiple digital communities. So you, you know, depending on what your brand is about, you want to show up and, you know, for example, for me, you know, I was showing up in communities where it was all style, black, style bloggers. I was also showing up in communities that 
um, were, you know, teachers who were also trying to establish some presence online. I was showing up, um, you know, in, in circles of minority women who were trying to start a business. So um, I, I joined like Fashion Group International. All of these different organizations or communities were intentional. They also helped me, but it was on purpose because now different groups um, begin to, to see your value and want to share your work and your content or your product to their networks. Um, and so as you are moving within these digital communities, you're sharing your success, you're sharing your story. And what does that do? That attracts uh, more success. All right, and um, we're almost, we're last two principles. This principle is about maintaining your purpose and not losing your way. So the digital space is a jungle. It is still being figured out. There's so much um, going on. There are, you know, shady characters who are going to try to sell you um, everything that they think you want so that you can be successful. So anything from fake followers to fake engagement to, um, you know, oh, automatic likes or um, even partnerships that you know are shady and you're like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to be associated with that, right? And so um, you want to go back to that vision, you want to go back to that mission statement and stay focused, right? Because unfortunately, we are human. And, and if you aren't focused, it's really, you know, it's, people can go after the easy the easy might be like oh well yeah let me invest in this you know whatever shady opportunity um and, and it could just really mess up what you are trying to build right um the digital space building a brand building a business um you're gonna go through highs and lows and not just in in business but you're gonna go through highs and lows in your personal life anybody who know who has gone ahead and done something outside of their career recognizes that just when you're about to take off and you're doing something great, something, you know, disastrous happens. And I, so I can relate to that, you know, I'm at the peak, like I'm doing really well. And then, you know, in my personal life, my relationship just like blew up on me, right? Um, and it's part of it, right? And so you have to be able to navigate that high, that low, celebrate both, recognize that you're on this journey. And then ultimately, you know, as you move forward, you want to let go of what doesn't serve you, right? And that's in business, that's in relationship. You want to absolutely make sure that you are consistently surrounded around positive energy, people that support you. Um, and and, you know, and also recognize that the people that we think should be excited about what you're doing may not be. And that includes family and friends. And that is okay. So stay focused on what you need to do. And eventually, um, you know, you will see that it was worth it. Um, and then my last principle is about dreaming big, right? Creating it and owning it. I can, um, I think two years into, so probably about 2019, um, I, was, I was doing really well. I was actually growing really fast. Like my Instagram followers kept growing and growing and I got scared. Like I was like, I, you know, I borderline kind of couldn't handle it. And so I, I actually kind of stepped, put my, what is it? Took my foot off the gas. Um, and that is associated with mindset, right? It's like, People around me saw it and they were like, this is for, yes, you, you got it, you, you know, but I could not handle it. So one of the things that's really important as you're building and growing, um, you want to make sure that you're working on your affirmations, that you're making sure that you're open to receiving. Um, and I am in a better state now. I fully um, accept, right, the abundance, the growth. I'm not scared anymore. And that is really because of um, the, the mindset work that I've been um, leaning into. Uh, be open to redefining those goals, right? And so as you are building something, and even for me, I can tell you that I recreate that vision board every six months. So I started at one point, 
you, you're working, working, growing, building. And then I have to reach, recreate that vision board. Like, okay, what is it that I'm doing? What is it? Because you have to teach yourself and keep yourself on that path. Um, and you're, you want to enjoy it, right? This is a journey um, where, you know, I didn't even really get into some of the amazing opportunities that I have been afforded, but everything from, you know, uh, I, I worked for Bumble as a community marketing manager. I was given a budget to throw fabulous free events for women. Um, I have been, I, when I was in St. Louis, I didn't know anybody and I was invited to all types of, you know, fancy events. Um, you know, even right now, I'm super excited. I just had some, some campaigns to travel. Um, but all of these things were not, I, I didn't conceive it. I didn't know. I just knew that I had to get to the other side. So you want to enjoy it. And then when good things start happening, embrace it. Don't get scared like I did uh, a couple of years ago. So I am a huge fan of Oprah. And so I'm going to close it with uh, a little bit of what she has to say, because I watched it this morning and I was like, wow, like this is kind of what I, you know, what this presentation is about. So we're going to watch uh, this for a few minutes and then I will open it for questions. All of you leaving here have the potential for enormous success. There's a price that comes with that. First and foremost, knowing who you are. Knowing who you are. Being able to answer this question, who am I? And what do I want? I'm asking the bigger question of who am I? Who am I really? And what do I want? I don't want to just be successful in the world. I don't want to just make a mark or have a legacy. The answer to that question for me is, I want to fulfill the highest, truest expression of myself as a human being. You must have some kind of vision for your life. Even if you don't know the plan, you have to have a direction in which you choose to go. You want to be in the driver's seat of your own life because if you're not, life will drive you. Knowing who you really are in this space and time that we embody. You must find a way to serve. Martin Luther King said that not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. Now we live in a world where everybody wants to be famous and where we admire people for just being famous. We think being known brings us value. The truth is all of that will fade in time. In three years, you won't be able to name the housewives of Atlanta. The real truth is that service and significance, service and the significance that you bring to your service is that which is lasting. When you shift the paradigm of whatever it is you choose to do to service and you bring significance to that, success will, I promise you, follow you. Service and significance equals success. Here's the key, learn from every mistake because every experience, encounter, and particularly your mistakes are there to teach you and force you into being more of who you are. And then figure out what is the next right move. What is your true calling? 
What is your dharma? What is your purpose? All of you leaving here have the potential for enormous success. There's a price that comes with that. People don't always like you. And they're not always happy for you. And if you surround yourself with people who are not accustomed to your success, they become fearful. They become scared because you are reflecting back something to them that they don't recognize. People who want the best for you want you to be your best. So my greatest advice to you is to surround yourself with people who are going to fill your cup until your cup runneth over. And what I know for sure is that the biggest choices begin and end with you. Your internal big questions. Who do I want to be in the world? Be excellent. People notice. Let excellence be your brand. Everybody talks about building a brand. I never even knew what that was. When people say, you're a brand, I would say, no, I'm just Oprah. What I recognize now is that my choice to in every way, in every example, in every experience, to do the right thing and the excellent thing is what has created the brand. All right, well, that is my conclusion. Thank you, thank you for listening to me for uh, during this workshop. Again, thank you, Nicole, um, and the Alumni Association for allowing me to speak and share my principles. Um, this is coming from a book uh, that is releasing soon. So you can find and learn more about it. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Kyra Z Alvarado and or subscribe to my blog post um, at www.kyraalvarado.com. Opening it to back to Nicole and thank you again. I took copious notes. Um, <laughs> I don't know about everyone else. I felt like I just needed to absorb everything and looking forward to um, you know playing this back. Uh, so if, ever, if anyone needs uh, the recording, happy to share it out. But yeah, if anyone has any questions, um, we have a couple of moments left. Um, I did get a question um, directly about um, you know how much of your partnerships has been outreaching directly to brands as opposed to opportunities coming to you and approaching you? Yeah, so that's a good question. I have never ever pitched a brand, right? And I think that that's because I leaned into my core values and I leaned into making sure that my content was always to the best of my capacity, high quality. And you know, what, 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 the, what happened was that, you know, people would find me until this day. I still get, I found you. I don't know how I found you. I was scrolling. And, you know, of course, you know, that's a whole, I, today I'm talking about principles. There is like the tech side, right? Like what are the hashtags that I, that you use? And, um, and so I guess all of the different hashtags that I've used throughout the last few years, sometimes that's how people find you. Um, but remember, there are millions and millions of people doing this kind of work, right? And so there's something to be said about when I do show up, I'm going to try to do my best. And I think that, you know, one post then takes them to um, my, my Instagram and then my website. And so, again, you want to make sure that your message is clear. You want to make sure that it's high quality. And, and I think that that is what has allowed me to, to have these brand partnerships. Uh, one of the questions was, are there any books, podcasts that you recommend on mindset? Yes. Um, so I'm a huge fan of Jim Rohn. I listen, he's a, you know, if people probably in the room know who he is, 
Um, he, you know, and the, so I listen, I read a lot of his blog posts and he's still blogging to this day. I listen to a lot of his videos, um, you know, old speeches, cause he's, he's a big self-development uh, guru. Um, I, I honestly listened to a lot of Tony Robbins um, and I, I have some of his books. The names don't come, uh, come uh, to mind off the top of my head, but you know, these are these motivational speakers that I am consistently consuming. You know, Jim Rohn, um, Tony Robbins, you know, I'm an Oprah fan, obviously how I close today. Um, and so whatever she has that's inspirational so that I can work on my mindset, I am um, consuming. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think digital branding and your success online is a marriage between what you are doing and how you are taking care of yourself also, right? Those things are synonymous, right? And, and so are you, you know, uh, establishing boundaries? Are you, you know, feeding and consuming the best content? All of those things play out in, uh, in the, your ventures in, in career and in business. I love that. I, I don't think I've read anything or listened to anything from Jim Rohn, so I'm going to put him yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. um, well, Kyra, on behalf of the Alumni Association, thank you so much for uh, speaking with us today and just sharing so much about your journey. Um, I know I learned um, so much. And obviously, everyone, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, again, would love to stay connected. So if you have any recommendations on future speakers or topics that would be of interest to you, please feel free to reach out. Um, but otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Obviously, um, you know, stay well um, and go Terps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all of the support in this event. And, um, and for everybody who listened to me, thank you, right? Like I'm like, I know I, I shared a lot and talked a lot. So I hope that it wasn't a water hose. And it's like, what is she talking about? But um, hopefully it was clear. Um, so I appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. This was amazing.